It's my man Robert Sarango. Last time I did a video on this guy's talk, he straight up lied to y'all, and I caught it. Well, let's talk about the this 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 fellowshipping this fellowshipping arrangement. Our loyalty is on the line, not to the disfellowship person, but to God, who is watching to see whether we will abide by His command not to have contact with those who are disfellowship. Do not receive him into your homes or say a greeting to him. Why not? Stop keeping company with them, not even eating with them. Notice that this inspired instruction is worded as a command, not a suggestion. I am saying this not to command you, but to make you aware of the earnestness of others and to test the genuineness of your love. Liar! Liar! Liar. Typical cult. I knew it was too good to be true. <laughs> the Lord said this was going to happen, so I guess we're just doing our duty. 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 With Serenko giving this talk a few months ago, he made the claim that shunning and disfellowshipping is found in the Bible, that it comes from Paul's letter to the Corinthians. However, if you simply took the time to read both letters to the Corinthians, you will find that the point of Paul's ministry was to establish a medium ground that both help cleanse congregations while establishing some form of discipline for a sinner. However, he constantly reminded people during his travels that it was crucial to follow in the footsteps of the one person who spilled his blood for all, to have the love of Christ in them in order to solve any matter. But the Jehovah's Witnesses are notorious for cherry picking scriptures and twist and sugarcoat what's actually written to fit their narrative, ignoring Paul's true intentions for sinners. With Serenko on the top of the list for providing instructions on what to do with a disfellowshipped individual, he is used again in this video that talks about how to be a true friend. Let's watch. Have you ever been in a situation where you felt especially anxious, vulnerable, even fearful, and you needed your closest friends to stand by you, to strengthen you and encourage you? Very likely we have experienced that. Think of this situation. You're out in the field ministry uh, with your friends, working in a quiet neighborhood. You can see your friends up and down the street calling house to house as you are. All of a sudden, the police arrive. They single you out and tell you that you need to go to the police station with them. You look around for your friends, and they've all disappeared. Why are you running? Why are you running? They've left you alone to deal with the situation. How would that make you feel? Disappointed, discouraged, maybe even a bit angered. Yep. Well, now we get the sense of how Jesus must have felt there in the Garden of Gethsemane. Yeah! when a mob of his enemies came to arrest him and haul him away for trial. And where were his 11 closest friends? Well, as today's text says, they all abandoned him and fled. What is really the point of this video? I was dumbfounded when I found this video and watched it. For starters, they absolutely reject their own message on how to become a true friend. I will eventually get to the point why I'm showing you this video, but I want to talk about how stupid and unnecessary the example he gave was, first of all, he compares this story to how Jesus was prophesied to be killed and his followers will abandon him. I cut some of that part off because he talks way too much about it. And okay, I get it. His disciples weren't great examples, but you have to understand at that time, those that followed Jesus were to be tortured and hanged. I mean, I would be scared too. The example he gave about his friends abandoning you once the police arrived. I honestly don't think that's realistic. Nobody would really disappear like that on you. When you're Jehovah's Witness, you are one thing and one thing only. Nosy as hell. I mean, come on, you're knocking on people's doors and when someone says, hey, I don't have time to talk, I gotta go somewhere, the next thing you're gonna do as a Jehovah's Witness is come out and say, where are you running off to? <laughs> is it more important than your life, which is gonna end soon? <laughs> okay, they don't do that, but Jehovah's Witnesses are nosy. In this scenario, first off, why would you run in the first place? You're not doing anything wrong. Why do you have to hide? <laughs> and the cops aren't just gonna like kill you in broad daylight. 
And for an organization that calls themselves a brotherhood, this makes this scenario once again unrealistic, with them being more nosy than anything. I'm sure your friends will go up to you to find out what the heck is going on. So this was a pretty poor analogy. Well, whatever they were thinking on that occasion, the 11 did not live up to the proverb that says, a true friend shows love at all times and is a brother who is born for times of distress. Proverbs 17, 17. Now, can you think of a Bible principle that would help each of us to be that brother or that sister who is born for times of distress when one of our friends is especially anxious or vulnerable or fearful. Um, Mr. Sorenko, sir, I didn't agree with our 1,000 year teaching on cleaning up the earth and I lost all my friends, basically my entire community, because they thought that I hated Jehovah and Jesus. It made me feel anxious, vulnerable, and definitely fearful. And all I wanted was for them to strengthen me and encourage me. So what should I do? Let's take a look at Matthew's account of it in Matthew chapter 7 and verse 12. Matthew 7, 12. He wrote, All things, therefore, that you want men to do to you, you also must do to them. Since last fall, we have charged 14 individuals connected to the same religious organization, the Jehovah Witnesses. The five defendants that we have charged today we're all adults in positions of trust with these victims and they abuse these children children are some of our most vulnerable members of society and they should be nurtured and protected and many of them gained access to their victims through this organization all things, therefore, that you want men to do to you, you also must do to them. All things, therefore, that you want men to do to you, you also must do to them. Do to them. Seeing how in his last video he says, one must cut all ties, he states the opposite in this one. Maybe not entirely backwards, and it doesn't specifically talk about how to be a true friend to a sinner, but he does quote Proverbs 17:17. 17, 17. So you tell me, shouldn't this also apply to sinners? What most don't know is if you are confused about a certain teaching and don't believe in it anymore, while still believing in everything else, there will be efforts to convince you that you are wrong and reinforce the belief on you. If you still provide evidence to support why you believe what you believe, you will still be labeled an apostate and then disfellowshipped. And then comes the shunning. I don't know about you, but this is not loving your friend and brother at all times. Here's how Luke worded it, just as you want men to do to you, do the same way to them. And that really is a golden rule for everyday life. Just as pure gold never tarnishes, the value of the golden rule has never diminished. And likely it's the most famous rule ever stated, but also it is one that's easily forgotten at times. I'm so perplexed. Do to men what you want done to you. I get it, but I can't wrap my hand around it because this is not who these guys really are. They don't live up to that moral code. Okay, lots to talk about, right? The Jehovah's Witnesses are in court right now for the way they have treated their members due to their lack of moral support and practice shunning. With this video, they clearly understand what it takes to apply this rule and obey the command of Jesus Christ. They are more than capable of applying this, yet in court, they were oblivious to this. They could not answer any specific questions and common sense ones at that. Now, how can we apply it? Basically, by just taking two steps. First of all, think, if I were in the other person's situation, how would I feel? What would I need? What would I want? And then second, take some positive action to do something good and merciful for that other person. It just starts with sharpening our sensitivity to the feelings of others. Now in that, Jesus is an excellent example to imitate because on many occasions and under many circumstances, Jesus shared in the feelings of those who were suffering in some way. First of all, he was sensitive to their needs. He felt their pain in his heart. And second, he was moved to show compassion 
and he took the initiative to help people. He reached out to those who were in distress. You heard him. Jesus was a perfect example to imitate because of the many times he put himself in the shoes of others and shared in the feelings of those who were what? Jesus shared in the feelings of those who were suffering in some way. Suffering in some way. There is no ounce of love and compassion with a Jehovah's Witness. Once you disagree on something, and before you guys in the comment section go crazy on me, I know that this has nothing to do with how to treat those who have been disfellowshipped. But you don't have to be a genius to realize that the same rules apply during those type of situations. And I'm not too far off because even in situations where something doesn't really go as planned with your brother or your brother annoys you in some way, the automatic response is retaliation. You see it in all their videos. He's just going to be working even more. I just don't know what to do about it because he's barely home as it is. Are you still listening to me? Mm-hmm. I just, I'm so tired. I don't have the support I need, you know? I know. And it never seems to end. I don't know why this keeps happening to me. I know it seems that way, but sometimes the decisions you make have consequences that don't go away. Excuse me? Not everyone is perfect like you. In your perfect life, Irene. I'm sorry. That's not what I meant. I... I don't have time for this. I'm sorry. That's not what I meant. Everything okay? It's not my fault that she married that guy from work. So these are our public talk schedules hey, for Wayne. the past few years. Hey, Sister Jones. Hey, what are you two up to? Wayne's going to be helping with public talk scheduling. Oh, great. Well, I'll let y'all get to it. So, we already have this week's schedule. We just need to keep confirming with the speakers and quickly replacing any cancellations. That's pretty important. I can totally do that. I actually have some new ideas on how to handle that. Okay, good. Um, but a, a phone call should be fine. Don't worry. It's not that hard. I can handle it. Can I show you my idea on how to streamline the process? More than a phone call? Yeah. The speaker isn't here. I'm sorry, what? Did you call and confirm like I asked you to? No. But what can I do? Well, nothing now. I'll take care of it. Wayne forgot to confirm the speaker, so I have to give the talk now. This is all they know always in defense mode and that's how they retaliate and it has a lot to do with the promotion of selfishness the organization instills in its members it's all about ego and they encourage you to think for themselves and forget about everyone else spiritually speaking so it's hard to really think like jesus when you have these guys constantly forcing doctrine down your throats i mean look at birthdays it JW can't celebrate birthdays. You can't even attend a friend's birthday for moral support because you have to think about you and your relationship with Jehovah, aka the organization. <laughs> Witnesses can't even vote, which is another form of selfishness because it's the governing body alone who you should be worshiping, they say. Only that's not how they paint it. They claim the Bible says to remain neutral and refrain from all forms of politics. That includes protests. Thank you so much for being here. This is really, really important. This is historic. We have never done something like this before. Do you see where we're at right now? In front of the White House. But the reason why I'm here to talk is because I'm a father of two and one on the way. And um, shunning affects a lot of people. It's also affecting my children. But why wouldn't you want to be political? I mean, why wouldn't you want to seek peace? At least vote for someone who is promoting a good thing for you to live a better life, right? And besides, Jesus tells us that we have to listen and obey the authorities. This includes following them. I, I would want to choose who to follow. I mean, as a Jehovah's Witness, I didn't really get the chance to vote for <laughs> you guys up in New York. I was forced to follow you and look at all the crap that you have put us all through. I mean, litigation, child sex abuse. I really don't feel safe in your hands. And on that note, by not listening to the authorities, the brothers in Russia are facing years in prison because you've told them to disobey state laws. And then you go and tell their families that it's all persecution. 
that's supposed to happen. The governing body themselves have a lot to blame for all the messed up things that are happening. They themselves are despicable, loathing, jealous, egotistic, money-hungry maniacs. I thought that this was a perfect place to stop showing you the rest of Saranko's talk because he continues talking about Jesus and the disciples and how they didn't really give us the greatest example. So I am sorry, though, that I had to keep butting in. I will leave a link to the rest of this video below in the video description. Actually, you know, there is one crucial thing that I wanted to show you in this video, and it's this right here. In Mark chapter 1, it shows us of how Jesus was moved to relieve people's suffering, because it tells of a time when Jesus was approached by a man who was full of leprosy. Now, Jesus knew it was unlawful for that man even to be there. But Jesus was so deeply moved that instead of turning the man away, Jesus did the unimaginable. He touched him. And after that one touch, the disease that had made the man an outcast was gone. You see, Jesus knew of the heartless view that the rabbinic leaders had toward lepers. Jesus, though, had real compassion for people who were suffering. Another example in Luke chapter 7 tells us of how Jesus was moved to dispel people's grief. It tells of when Jesus saw a funeral procession. Now, the circumstances were especially tragic because a widow's only son had just died, her only means of support. And Jesus' gaze was fixed on the grief-stricken mother. And he told her to stop weeping, weeping. And then he spoke to the lifeless body, and the young man came to life. None of the religious leaders had ever done that for the people. Well, what did we learn from these accounts about the Christ? Well, in each case, did you notice the connection between Jesus' compassion and his action? He could not see the plight of others without being moved with pity, and he could not feel such pity without acting on it. So when Jesus uh, did those things, it really helps us to appreciate the attitude that we have to have toward those that are close to us and who are going through difficult situations in life. People, he is showing, you know, proving to you and I that Jesus was in fact an apostate himself. Think about it, with this man of leprosy that the religious leaders were conditioned to stay away from, individuals with leprosy were often regarded as unclean and were subject to social isolation. I have here a written description of how lepers were seen back then. This is what it says. Leprosy was not only a physical ailment, but also carried significant symbolic and ritual implications in ancient Jewish culture. Those afflicted with leprosy were often excluded from the community, and their condition was associated with impurity. Rituals for cleansing and purification were outlined in Leviticus, highlighting the social and religious context of surrounding leprosy in, bi in biblical times. So, in other words, they were sick. And fellow brothers and sisters, what were you called when you started breaking free from this cult? What did your fellow brothers call you? Sick. Yeah, you were basically being called a leper. And just how the religious leaders of then treated lepers, likewise the governing body are treating people like us the same way. But Jesus didn't care. <laughs> he often went against traditional religious conditioning. You see now why I say Jesus was like an apostate, like you and I? we rather give a blood transfusion to someone in need of it so that they can live. That, my friends, is called love, which the, 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 which the JWs don't have. But Jesus did. I mean, lots of people were considered rejected, and Jesus just talked and touched and healed them like nothing. There are a lot of examples of opposition demonstrated by these religious leaders. I mean, Mary Magdalene, being exposed to demons and everyone stayed away from her. Jesus goes and heals her. The Samaritan woman who was rejected by the community, Jesus goes and gives her words of encouragement. The man with the withered arm, ignored by the common people, Jesus goes and heals him on a Sabbath, which was strictly forbidden. And the woman who touched Jesus's garments because she wanted to be healed. And what was it that Jesus told her when he turned around? Daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace and be freed from your suffering. <laughs> there are so many examples of Jesus doing what's right, despite their spiritual standing or physical implications. And Saranko hypocritically admits he was a perfect example to imitate. These guys are not stupid. They just want to play stupid so that they can get what they want. Oh, man. 
the heck? Rewind. And they are doing it in court. Now, what exactly is going on in Norway? Well, ironically, this is this lack of imitating Jesus and being a true friend is what got the Jehovah's Witnesses in Norway in trouble in the first place, <laughs> which was why I said, what the hell was the point of them releasing this video? Like, what was the point? With Watchtower currently in court facing litigation, where they are suing Norway for revoking their national registration and withholding state funds, which, by the way, we don't really blame Norway for deregistering this organization, right? I mean, it makes sense. The state claims that the organization violates Norway's Religious Communities Act, which basically includes freedom of religion and freedom of association, as guaranteed in the European Convention on Human Rights. With their shunning and disfellowshipping practices, they try to defend themselves, but they basically cherry-pick scriptures, sugarcoat what's actually written, and victimize themselves. While lying in court, there is no escaping the reality of how these practices have violated these laws, causing ex-members to lose their families and lose out on friendships of which are crucial for survival and development, says one female psychiatrist in the court. These practices have also caused many ex-members to commit suicide, and the state does not like that one bit. The Jehovah's Witnesses have not only been targeted for violating these laws, but they are also in a twisted dance of tango with other states and countries for their involvement in child sex abuse. For not reporting these offenders to the authorities, nor the congregation. I swear by Almighty God. I swear by Almighty God. If God's word provides a direction on a certain doctrine, uh, Jehovah's Witnesses are bound by that, regardless of how others may view it. Investigation into child sexual abuse among Jehovah's Witnesses. Just beliefs and standards of Jehovah's Witnesses were at play in this case from start to finish. The instructions were you keep these pedophiles secret. I said, hold up, wait a minute. Something ain't right. And if they don't actively disassociate, then they will be disfellowshipped as episodes. <laughs> Uh, no. Since Jehovah hates liars, we should avoid all lies. The point that's being made, which is the victim of child sexual abuse who wants to and does leave the organization is shun. And then 16. They have been claiming for decades that these are the signs of the end. That when all governments would come together to take down all false religions, they would be the last to be standing, saying, they will be persecuted for having the truth. However, tables have turned, and they have been caught yet again in another lie. It is them who have been the first in the process of being taken down. And their excuse? They say they are innocent and are being persecuted for following God and the Bible. But are they really innocent? I mean, they have lied to the court, saying they do not shun. That family ties remain the same, and they do not baptize children. And if these baptized children grow up and mature enough to make their own decision to leave the organization one day, their claim is that they made their own choice to disassociate themselves. And members who disassociate themselves don't face the same consequences as disfellowshipped ones. Well, the Oslo District Court and their lawyers, all being women, by the way, which I'm sure they can't stand, being an organization extremely misogynistic. I said that right. Wow. Misogynistic. Perfect. They don't believe in women in position of power. They don't even allow them to give speeches. They don't even allow them to pray in the congregation unless there are no males present. Now, with these women doing a far better job than they are, they have responded with disturbing evidence that exposes these lies. The evidence? Their very own videos and publications from JW.org. Two of those videos specifically target young children who do get baptized and explain the practice of shunning and disfellowshipping in detail. One being a young girl who gets baptized very young who faces getting kicked out of her parents' home and not allowed to hear from her very own parents for 15 years. The second video is a cartoon from the cartoon videos of Caleb and Sophia. The Jehovah's Witnesses, in a nutshell, have been caught lying and have dug their very own grave. They're what I like to call screwed. Anyway, how about I play both of these videos for you? It feels so good to be with my family and friends. 
when I'm with the brothers and sisters in our congregation, it's the best place I could be. My children and I are so happy now, but it hasn't always been this way. My parents were missionaries when my mom got pregnant with me. Mom and dad were very zealous and people just assumed that I would follow in their footsteps. And for a while I did. I was the model child who was always held up as an example. Sure, the attention boosted my self-confidence, but it also put me under enormous pressure it was like everyone was watching me, and I couldn't make a mistake. In my mid-teens, I began to feel torn. I liked the truth, but I felt so confined. I didn't tell anyone how I felt. I just pretended everything was all right and went through the motions. I envied kids who didn't have to live under so many restrictions. And if they got the truth later in life, they got to experience the best of both worlds. I thought maybe things would improve after I graduated high school. But then at my new job, I met Eric. He truly understood me. He made me feel special. And I loved him. I loved him. In many ways, I felt free. For the first time in my life, I could just do what I wanted. It wasn't long before our relationship became intimate. I felt guilt at first, but after a while, it just seemed that this is what two people who love each other do. And I was willing to give up everything for him. Everything. Looking back, my parents tried hard to do the right thing, to do things Jehovah's way. But because I didn't have a hatred for what's bad, I couldn't see anything wrong with my choices. This eventually led me to do things I later regretted. I ended up getting disfellowshipped. Sonia Erickson has been disfellowshipped. It crushed my whole family. Later, my father explained to me that I couldn't remain in the home because I refused to change my lifestyle. He told me I was having a negative effect on my younger brother and sister. And I'm out of this house. I was determined to do what I wanted. When I left home that day, all I could think about was Eric. I didn't even care that my parents' hearts were breaking. I didn't think about the devastation and disappointment that I had caused them. I blamed my parents for my situation. I even blamed Jehovah. My family missed me so much. Even after all I had done. What helped them to remain loyal to Jehovah for the many years I was disfellowshipped? It was the Bible account of Aaron. 
Jehovah directly judged two of Aaron's sons and put them to death. In this case, Jehovah asked Aaron and his family not to mourn in order to show the entire nation that they supported Jehovah's judgment. Mom and dad saw that they needed to be loyal, just like Aaron. They loved me and wanted me to come back to Jehovah. I tried to contact them. I just wanted to talk and to hear their voice. I missed being with my family. And they thought about reaching out to me. But they knew that if they had associated with me, even a little, just to check on me, that small dose of association might have satisfied me. What disturbed me the most out of this entire video was this part right here. I couldn't help but to think if their daughter was in some kind of trouble, in some kind of life, see like that. <laughs> if, her, if she was in some kind of trouble calling out to her parents and them just like look at the phone and just basically ignore the phone call, what would have happened if she would have lost her life that night or gets kidnapped or something? How devastating that would be, right? This goes to show that not even checking up on your child or someone disfellowshipped is allowed. And a moment of silence, if I can get it. <laughs> as a Jehovah's Witness who follows Jehovah, whom, whom you claim is a God of love and father of a son who demonstrated what love truly means, who didn't have an ounce of dislike towards someone, who told Peter to forgive 70 times 7, who suffered and died for you, do you really think that when Armageddon is said and done and you have to stand before Christ himself, you really think he's going to just stand there and let you walk into the, the promised land to, to live forever, knowing you have rejected a fellow sheep with blood on your hands? You're going to just say, well, he made his choice. She made her choice. You're going to tell me that Jehovah would be proud of you for remaining loyal to him because you ignored your child who was desperate when they needed you the most. And for what? Be maybe because he or she smoked a cigarette, sold cigarettes, had sex for the first time, which, by the way, was expected because, you know, how the hell are you going to feed your sexual desires when you're sexually abstinent? I I'll do you one better. The same child who was calling you because they really needed you mom and dad, is the same child you raised as a baby. All that you did as a parent was for nothing? This is just the same as you neglecting your baby who is crying because they can't breathe with, you know, the blanket over their head. And you're just sitting there watching them and, and doing nothing about it? That's, that's basically what you're doing. They are innocent and they're still growing and learning. And that's 50% of your job as a parent to help them grow, to help them learn, and to keep them out of trouble and forgive them in the process when they fall down. You're supposed to be there. Wow. You're supposed to be there to help them get back up. The other 50% of your job as a parent is to love them unconditionally. How evil and disgusting this organization really is. And to think all it takes is to have common sense. I mean, let me tell you something, people. <laughs> Kevin Hart. There is no need to disfellowship or, dis or blah, discipline someone who sinned. If Jesus died for your sins, it's all forgiven. <laughs> what is wrong with you people? There shouldn't be any more discipline. Christ took on that burden for you. That was the point of his death. You're literally making his death pointless at this point. The governing body members are literally trying to replace Jesus to control you because they believe the Bible is too complicated to read but it really isn't and they want you to think that but in the end it's all about taking your money that's it okay i'm sorry i got really carried away i mean this literally is a matter of life and death and it's important that everyone realizes the harm that these practices these these shunning practices blah what is wrong with me today these shunning practices cause now, I know I went a little bit off script, but I thought I'd show you the next video that the lawyers in Norway presented. Wow, that looks like me. I have a question. What is it, my dear? How do you get baptized? That's a good question. And an important one. Mom looks so young in this picture. 
Hey! <laughs> yes, you can be young, like your mother. What matters is that you love Jehovah and want to follow Jesus' teachings closely. You can show that you want to get baptized by what you do, like obeying your parents. Learn about Jehovah by reading the Bible. That will help you obey Jehovah and avoid things that Jehovah hates. Then you'll want to share your faith with others. Especially in the ministry. And at the meetings. Make friends with others who love Jehovah. <laughs> and most importantly, tell Jehovah in prayer that you want to serve Him forever. That's why we get baptized in public. It shows others that we've dedicated our lives to Jehovah. That's so cool. Would you like to get baptized one day? Mm hmm Why don't you learn a little more about the steps for baptism and share it with us at family worship? Okay. I don't think that there is much to say about this one, but clearly you can see that they do allow baptism at a young age, despite their claim that they don't. And the parents who allow their children to watch this, it doesn't click for them. Because in their mind, they're not thinking of the consequences. They, they don't think it will ever happen to their kids. I mean, this has a lot to do with indoctrination, yes. They, they are constantly forcing parents to teach kids when they are young, to have family study every week, to teach and teach and teach. And once you do that, you know it's going to be a walk in the park for your kids, and you don't see them failing you or Jehovah. I mean, have you ever heard those parents who, who praise their children even if they go, uh, get in trouble in school? They say the famous line, oh, not my child. <laughs> my child will never do that. It's basically the same thing. They don't think about the what ifs and I don't blame them. I mean, they simply don't have the time to. I mean, the world is ending, right? So their only focus is to like indoctrinate their children until it's too late, too late and, and baptize them before they die in Armageddon, which is what is taught to children. They scare them into thinking they won't survive Armageddon unless they are baptized. Anyway, this I think this is a great place to, to leave it. It's, it's already long, and, and I want to thank you all for watching, for who have enjoyed it so far. Please make sure to give it a like. I do have one announcement to make. Um, I do apologize that it's been taking so long to upload videos. I know that it's it's been declining. Obviously, you can tell it's because of my living arrangements and, and all the disturbances, and I'd rather upload videos where it's peaceful. But have no fear, I'm actually going to be moving um, or in the process of moving within the next two weeks. So I will be very busy to even upload anything. But however, I will be on TikTok uploading short videos if you haven't caught them already. And when I'm officially moved, I will have my own space free from disturbances. And I have a lot, I mean, a lot planned for you guys. It's, it's going to be fun. With all that being said, this couldn't be an XJWMJ video without my famous outro. This is MJ in context. Take care and be safe. Oh, and share this video with friends. Don't forget to be kind and be a true friend. And remember, <laughs> you can't make this up. The Lord said this was gonna happen, so I guess we're just doing our duty. Duty. Duty.